Hi everyone, Materium here again with another battle report. And this one, uh, well, actually is designed to help me work something out. Um, anybody who's watched my battle reports knows that I've been having trouble with my dwarfs. Uh, this week, our Dark Elf player offered to trade his Dark Elves for my dwarves. And, uh, I've been doing some serious thinking about it, and I decided that I needed to get at least one more game in with them to just kind of to feel them out and decide whether I wanted to do this trade. So uh, our Beastman players agreed to come over on an on unusual night and uh, give me a 2,500 point battle line game uh, to play with kind of a new list construction for the dwarves that I hadn't tried before just to kind of get my thoughts in order. So that's what I'm bringing you today. Um, also, I, in an attempt to bring better picture quality, I'm using my camera instead of my phone this time. So uh, I would very much like any feedback anyone happens to have on uh, how the pictures turned out this time and, and which uh, ones they prefer, whether you prefer this look or uh, the the other more standard battle reports that I do. So let's go ahead and get into it. So here is our board. A um, couple of things to take note of here. Uh, the tower on my opponent's side is the Tower of Blood, so it's giving him, if he's within six inches of it, hatred and frenzy. Uh, the water was the Torrent, so that's dangerous terrain for everybody, but plus three initiative. And I got really lucky in that the house on my side is a Dwarven brew house, so I'm unbreakable within six inches. And the marsh just outside of that is an Earthblood mirror, so uh, some free regen. Um, so it was a very kind of cluttered board. We rolled ten pieces of terrain, so uh, here's what it is. Let's go ahead and get into deployment, and I'll show you what I'm up against. So, starting on my left, I have a Gorgon, or rather, my opponent has a Gorgon. Then he's got a unit of seven Minotaurs with full command additional hand weapons and the blackened plate. With them is a Gorbull with heavy armor, ram horn helm, and the steel claws. Then he has a unit of 19 Bestigor with full command and the Manbane standard. With them is his general, the Great Bray Shaman, uh, level 4 to Lore of Beasts. Talisman of Preservation, Hag Tree Fetish, Additional Hand Weapon, and the Jagged Dagger. Next to that is a 30-man uh, Gore Herd uh, with... Or I'm sorry, this is the 25-man Gore Herd with full command and a shield. Uh, and then behind the building, he has a unit of 10 Ungore Raiders with full command. Then here is, on the other side of the tower, is his unit of 30 gore with full command and additional hand weapons. And hanging out with them is his war gore, BSB with heavy armor shield, many limbed, gouged tusk, gnarled hide, and the beast banner. And then uh, my corn cannon there is standing in for a tusk gore chariot. Uh, he hasn't used one yet, so he wanted to kind of test it out before he bought the kit. Um, he also has another 10-man Ungor herd ambushing that's off the table right now. So starting on my left, I have a bolt thrower with two runes of penetrating and a rune of accuracy on it. Uh, in the marsh is a unit of 15 uh, quarrelers with great weapons. Then on the other side of the dwarf brew house there is a unit of 20 iron breakers. Hanging out with them is my general, uh, Debrin First Forge, my rune lord. He has the master rune of Grommel, a rune of fortitude, and a rune of iron, and a runic talisman with a, one rune of spell breaking and two runes of warding on it. There's also my Thane Battle Standard Bearer there, who has three runes of battle, so that unit gets to fight in an extra rank. Um, and then there is a rune lord with hand weapon and shield who has the master rune of spite and the double rune of spell breaking in that unit. Then I have flame cannon with the rune of forging on it, a unit of 20 long beards with great weapons and full command, and with them is another rune smith with two runes of spell breaking and one rune of warding, so that's three dispel scrolls, two of which have the chance to eat the spell. Then I have another unit of 15 quarrelers with great weapons and full command. And then up on a hill, I have a cannon with the rune of forging and the master rune of immolation. So if he gets over to that, 
uh, it'll explode. And in front of both the Iron Breakers and the Longbeards, I have a Gyrocopter with no upgrades. So my ultimate plan, since I know he's running Beast, is uh, he gets Amber Spear, so I want to Spell Eat that so he can't deal with my Gyrocopters. And then I'm tr I, I want to try and eat Wisons so he can't buff his units. Um, other than that, I need to use the War Machines and my shooting to thin him down, and then come in hard with my combat blocks once he's in a manageable size. Um, I'm really kind of worried about the left flank there, the Minotaurs and the Gorgon. Um, that Bolt Thrower and those Quarrelers have a lot of work to do before those guys hit that flank. But I'm hoping because the Quarrelers are unbreakable, I can very least tie them up before they get into too much of the important stuff. So that's the battle plan going into it. So, dwarves win first turn, and I decide to play it cagey. Um, I think one of the big problems I've had with the dwarves at this point is that I overcommit too early, even with the gyrocopters. So what I did is I just moved up barely, just enough so that he needs, like, 12 on the dice to charge, and hopefully to use the, uh, the Tower of Blood there to frenzy him out of position. Um, so we'll see if that works. So then I don't move anything out, so I go into shooting, and the bolt thrower starts paying for itself immediately by pumping three wounds into the gorgon. So I got three more I gotta get off, um, but it's starting to look good. I can handle that. If I can go ahead next turn and kill the gorgon, then I can start focusing fire on those minotaurs and maybe thin them down before they come and wreck my face. Then some shooting into the bestigors end up pinging two guys off, I think. That might have been my quarrelers that did that. And then the quarrelers on this side ping off uh, two of the gore over here, and my cannon fails to hit the chariot. Uh, I did ten off the back and then rolled four. So we go into Beastman uh, turn one, and he does attempt to charge the gyrocopter here and fails, so he goes up four inches, I think. He also fails to charge this gyrocopter here and goes up a few inches, but it's not very much. Now, in neither case did he actually have to make these charges. He succeeded his leadership in both cases and chose to try and do it anyway. Then over here, he moves the raiders into the tower so uh, he can get some good line of sight on things. And he succeeds in ambushing his 10-man uh, gore unit off to the side here uh, to come after my cannon, which has me a little nervous. He then just inches up the uh, chariot a little bit, so he's got better charges on a couple of things. Um, but he's not wanting to overcommit at this point. And over on this side, he moves his uh, Bestigore into the hut here, and uh, that's his Greatberry Shaman sitting on top, ready to cast nasty spells at me. And then over on this side, he starts moving the Gorgon and the Minotaurs um, so that they can get charges on my Quarrelers and my Bolt Thrower. Uh, annoying thing is he did manage to move the Minotaurs up enough so that they're out of the front arc of my Quarrelers, so I'm going to have to waste next turn turning them around and getting ready for the stand-and-shoot reaction. So after this is done, we go into Magic, and uh, I do manage to spell Eater uh, Amber Spear like I wanted to, but I he ca tried to cast Wissens, and I only countered it. I failed to eat it. Um, so that stopped that, and then I stopped the last spell he was going to do with dice. So he's only down to three spells, but unfortunately he's got still got the buff spells, and I've got no way to eat them, which uh, makes me sad. But hopefully, since I bought life for the uh, Gyrocopters, they'll be able to put in work and uh, make up the difference for me. So Dwarf turn two, I start off with uh, this gyrocopter flying over the gore unit here and dropping its once again bomb and ends up taking out three of the gore out of that unit. So uh, small start but a good one and now I'm behind his lines where the gyrocopters are really going to put in their work for me. And over here I do the same thing with this one and fly over the building, drop the bomb on it and kill five of the ten gore or ungore raiders that are in the building. Um, but he succeeded his leadership check so they don't panic and run out. 
And over here, as I explained before, I just reformed to uh, face the oncoming destruction here. Um, I'm hoping I'll at least get some stand and shoot if the minotaurs come in, and I, I might be able to get rid of one of them or so. And then at that point, it's just how long can this unit of quarrelers tie up the minotaurs with the, the unbreakable bonus of the dwarf brew house uh, before they just get stomped and those minotaurs get into my flank. Um, everything else up here, except for the quarrelers, just moves up. Um, I want to be ready for counter charges as he starts coming in closer, so uh, that's pretty much what I've got here. The other thing to note is that the unit on the left, the Ironbreakers, actually have a Rune of Slowness, so I'm kind of hoping if he charges me, the Rune of Slowness will stop him in the water, and then I can counter charge back at him. So we go into shooting, and the cannon lands a perfect hit on his chariot and inflicts a single wound. And the quarrelers ping off another two of the gore here. And then my flame cannon follows up and barely brushes the front, but I do kill two more gore um, there, but they don't panic. And then the bolt thrower over here pings uh, the gorgon, hits him again, but only inflicts one wound. So uh, I'm really afraid that the gorgon's going to get into me and start eating people for his... his killing blow healing thing so I really need to get him dead as soon as possible so beastmen turn two and the ungort raiders fail a charge against the cannon and stagger forward a couple of inches and the chariot fails a charge against the cannon and staggers forward a few inches and the minotaurs charge the quarrelers and one of them is killed by the stand and shoot reaction and then they fail their charge as well. And to make the epic run of fail complete, the Gorgon fails his charge into the Bolt Thrower. So, uh, the Dice Gods are, are really looking out for me. Um, maybe Grungi really wants me to keep the Dwarves and is influencing things. But uh, four failed charges is huge for me, and, and I really need to take this opportunity to capitalize on it. So I managed to stop his magic and his shooting was ineffectual, so we go into Dwarf turn 3. I position my gyrocopter here behind his uh, gore, and that's actually the only move I do this turn. So we go into shooting and the gyrocopter burns, uh, looks like 4 or 5 of the uh, gore here out of this big horde, so that's pretty good. This gyrocopter managed to kill two gore out of the herd in front of it, and its template touched the building, so it killed three of the ungor in the building as well. So finally managed to get lucky again with the bolt thrower and take down the gorgon, which again is, is just absolutely huge. I, I've had a good opportunity to take advantage of these failed charges, and it's, it's paying for itself. And the Quarrelers take shot at the Minotaurs, and uh, I think last turn he got Wissens up on them, but even with that, I managed to ping down one more Minotaur. Um, they just don't have a lot of defenses, and I'm shooting a lot of shots into them. And I'm rolling like a, a, a beast. Uh, I do very, very well with the Quarrelers. I, I always do for some reason. Terribly with the Thunderers, but very well with the Quarrelers. And the Quarrelers on this side ping off one more Bestigore out of this unit here. And then the flame cannon goes off and kills another five or six, which is enough for a panic check. However, we forgot that because they're within six inches of the uh, the Tower of Blood, that they're frenzied. So uh, we both, both players forgot it, so he rolled, panicked, and uh, turned and started to flee. Now when we remember this, I essentially just auto tell him to auto-reform them and, and get a full movement, um, but we don't remember it for like a turn and a half. So we go into Beastman turn, I think this is three. Uh, the Again, we are forgetting about, or no, this is the frenzy check. So yeah, so he fails the frenzy check with these two guys and they have to exit the building, um, so they end up right there. So Minotaurs charge at the Quarrelers again. Quarrelers stand and shoot, and I in think inflict one wound, but the Minotaurs fail their charge again. So uh, they're getting closer, but again, this gives me another round of shooting into them, and uh, 
it's just <laughs> my opponent is just slapping his forehead at this one at these minotaur who apparently can't do anything but waddle slowly closer to death <laughs> um over here he finally gets the chariot in on the cannon i'm hoping he brings in the gore or the the ungor as well so that when the cannon dies a horrible death it blows up both units and because he wasn't expecting the master rune of immolation he obliges me and runs in there um i'm pretty sure that tank is dead or the not tank the cannon is dead uh, but I'm hoping if I roll well on the explosion, I can do some major damage to those. Maybe even kill the chariot, which I need to because the angle he ran in on there, when he overruns, he's going to clip the end of, or the flank of my quarrelers and start a new fight there. So my opponent realizes that the, the minotaurs just aren't moving fast enough to get things done, so his best of gore and great bray shaman come out of the building uh, to show him how it's done. And here his uh, gore unit fails to rally and keeps running. Again, we haven't quite remembered that they had frenzy, so they shouldn't have panicked in the first place, uh, but they keep moving. But I think they only move forward two inches. So I don't remember magic being a big deal this turn. Uh, so we go into combat. He kills the cannon on impact hits. It blows up. I roll for crap on the, the chariot, so I think it might have taken a wound, maybe not. Uh, and I only kill three of the Ungors there, so uh, definitely not the kind of earth-shattering kaboom I was hoping for. And as you can see, the chariot overruns into the flank of my quarrelers. He's got to do a lot to kill them. Um, he could probably do it, but I've got, if I can go, they've got great weapons, and they're going to carve that chariot up if any of them are left by the time it's their turn to go. So, Dwarf turn 5, uh, I'm pretty much thinking I've got these guys thinned down enough to start coming out. So, uh, my Iron Breakers and my Longbeards both come out from behind the fence. Uh, and you can see my Gyrocopter there moves over to start spraying the Bestigore, because I think they're the bigger threat. And then here I just move the Gyrocopter so he can get a shot down the flank of the fleeing gore unit and here's just a better look at where this gyrocopter ended up uh, next to the best of gores so during shooting uh, between the bolt thrower and the quarrelers I think I take out one more minotaur so you can see him in the back there there he's down three at this point and gyrocopter spray here only manages to kill one uh, gore out of this unit However, this gyrocopter makes up for it and kills one, two, three, four, five, six bestigors out of this unit, uh, but they don't panic. And the flame cannon here basically touches the edge of this unit and kills off one of these gore. And again, because we're forgetting about the frenzy, uh, they panic and run here. We do, however, I think it's on his turn, remember that that shouldn't be done, and so they just get put back to where they were uh, for the start of his turn. So we go into combat, and the Tuscor Chariot flubs. Uh, he kills three guys on impact hits, but nothing else. So the three uh, quarrelers with great weapons that are there all hit, all wound, and just carve up the, uh, the wounded chariot like a turkey. <laughs> and here is where, at the start of Beastman turn four, that we remember... Uh, that we screwed up so uh, the beast or the gore unit here gets put back to where it was before the panic and then because we didn't remember exactly where these guys were when they panicked uh, we just decided to treat it as if he had rallied last turn so he's gonna get his full complement of actions now so over here uh, the minotaurs charge in again take I think another wound and fail again he rolled two on the charge he needed three and didn't get it uh, however the best of gores slam into the flank uh, but they ended up because it's dangerous terrain ended up taking two wounds to the unit for dangerous terrain and his great bray shaman took a wound as well from the dangerous terrain his gore unit charges here into the iron breakers and it looks like he loses three from uh, the dangerous terrain of the torrential pond there. 
And these two guys actually attempted to charge the flame cannon, like to, to basically skirt through the center there, and they failed and stumbled forward like a single inch. And then these guys fail their march block check <laughs> and uh, come forward five inches, uh, but the gyrocopter march blocked them. It's like, I felt so bad because we screwed this up for two turns and then he still can't go forward, so... And here I was dumb. Uh, after the fight with the chariot, I reformed a look at these uh, Ungor, forgetting that they were skirmishers. So uh, he reminds me by essentially walking right around my quarrelers, and there's not a whole lot I can do to stop him there. So we go into magic, and my opponent finally has a good magic phase. Uh, he gets uh, Wissens off on the Gore Herd that's fighting the Ironbreakers, and gets Savage Beast of Horos off on his main, uh, or on his Great Bray Shaman. Uh, I tried to cast it, I just or tried to stop it, just didn't have the, the ability to do so. So uh, this is definitely going to be... Making me nervous, most certainly. So during combat, uh, his savage beast, Great Bray Shaman, just tears a full rank out of the back of my uh, quarrelers. But for the most part, his best is Flub. Um, I end up killing two of them, but and I lose bad, but I'm unbreakable. So uh, I succeed my reform check, and he reforms as well to get more dudes into the combat. So that's what we're looking at here. So even with Savage or er, uh, Wissens off, he ends up only killing three of the Iron Breakers, and my three ranks of Iron Breakers plus three characters just absolutely trash this Gore unit. Uh, they turn and break. Uh, I don't catch them, and I end up in the water, and I have my uh, Rune Smith and uh, one of the Iron Breakers take a wound uh, from the dangerous terrain there. So we go to Dwarf turn 5, and uh, I charge the Gore unit, uh, run them down and catch them, but two more Iron Breakers die from dangerous terrain. My Longbeards charge these guys, and my plan here is basically to just kill them and then reform so that uh, his uh, Gore unit here will be in my front, so they're not going to get any flank charges or anything like that. Over here, I move the uh, gyrocopter to try and spray the minotaurs. It's it's kind of a long shot, but uh, there's really nothing else better for it to do, and I'm certainly not going to throw it into combat to die. And then I just move this gyrocopter around to this side to get another spray down on these gores. Um, I'm almost done with them. I just want to finish them off. And then I swift reform here to face forward because... I'm paying for being an idiot and trying to chase skirmishers with a move or fire unit. Um, so they're just standing there and I'm feeling dumb. So during shooting, Gyrocopter takes off a three or four, so he's only got basically one rank of those gores left. And I'm feeling pretty confident at this point. And here I get lucky with the gyrocopter and manage to kill one more of the minotaurs. So now all he's got is three minotaurs and the doom bull, which is still pretty butch, but I'm getting closer to collecting some points for that. And then here, the dice finally just decide to say, screw you dwarves, as I roll a misfire, and then re-roll it because I have the rune of forging, roll another misfire, and then roll a one on the misfire table and blow my flame cannon to kingdom come. Ah. <sighs> stupid misfire tables. <laughs> then in this fight in the middle, he actually manages to kill one of my long beards with those freaking uh, gores before I crush him and turn to face the gore unit. And then here, another just unholy beating goes down <laughs> against my quarrelers, but three manage to survive, uh, and they're unbreakable because they're next to the Dwarf brew house. Uh, but I don't kill any of the best of gore here, and, and that's not good. So, Beesman 5, the Minotaurs, finally make it into the Bolt Thrower, and uh, that's going to be goodbye, Bolt Thrower. Then over here, he gets the gore into the front of the Longbeards, and the ungore into their flank. So, uh, I'm still 
relatively confident here, although I wasn't expecting the dual charge. Um, I do have the stubborn banner on this unit, so if they survive, um, uh, I shouldn't break. So we go into magic, and uh, his great Bray Shaman tries to throw uh, Wissens on the unit of gore that are fighting my long beards. He gets it, but he miscasts and rolls a two, blows himself up, kills a bunch of the best the, the best of gores, and sucks his general great Bray Shaman into the warp, and kills one of my dwarves. So uh, that was just totally unexpected. Um. So we go into combat then, and even the, like the last three remaining Bestigors are still enough to kill the two uh, quarrelers there, and uh, he just, I mean, they kill him to a man, and he just turns around and uh, ends up facing outward. Uh, I don't know if he was planning on going for the Iron Breakers or not, or just looking towards whatever else is going on. And then over here, obviously, the uh, Minotaurs just absolutely butcher that bolt thrower. It, it doesn't hold, stand a chance at all. And then because they're frenzied, they have to overrun. They overrun two inches, which enters the swamp and uh, has the Minotaur take a, a wound from dangerous terrain. And then here, his beastmen just go absolutely apeshit all over me. Um... They have Frenzy because of the tower. He got the Hatred rerolls from uh, the Bestial Prowess or whatever it is. Plus the pump from the Wissens just totally kills me. He did, what, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 wounds uh, between everything. And I did almost nothing back. I might have killed a few gore. But uh, it was absolutely terrible. Um, but I was stubborn and managed to stick around. So, Dwarf turn six, I fail a charge with the Quarrelers into the back of the, uh, Ungor unit that's on the flank there, so they end up just right at the edge of the fence. And then I moved the gyrocopter over here to try and blast these last three Bestigor. Uh, there wasn't really a good way that I could do it that didn't have me in the line of sight of the Minotaurs or the Bestigors. So here, I'm only in the line of the Bestigors. So I'm hoping, uh, even if I don't kill them with the blast, if they hit me I'm on his next turn, uh, I'm still unbreakable. So unless he just flat out kills me, um, I still think this is my best option at this point. Um, and then over here, I just move the gyrocopter around to watch what's going on, since this is top of six, there's, uh, nothing else I can do with him. And then I turn my Iron Breaker unit here, um, just in case he kills these guys' reforms and wants to get froggy and charge in, um, that I'm facing forward. So during combat, he kills the, uh, Longbeards and ends up turning around to look this way. Um, I guess he's going to send the best to gore, or the, the gore unit here after the gyrocopter, um, which I, I'm guessing I can escape, so I, I am kind of ruining where I put him, but other than that, um, nothing else is concerning there. So, bottom of six, uh, the best of gores charge into the gyrocopter here. Uh, I didn't actually kill any of them last turn, so all three of them are hitting me here. And the gore unit declares a charge on the gyrocopter, and the gyrocopter turns around and flees five inches. And, of course, the gore unit easily catches up and kills the gyrocopter. And here, the uh, best of gores only manage to do one wound on the gyrocopter, uh, but I'm unbreakable, so nothing happens there. I don't end up killing any f more of the best of gores. So here's pretty much what the board looks like at the end of the game. Uh, my opponent also has his unit of minotaurs off behind the building that I couldn't get in one shot. So uh, it was a very bloody game. Uh, it, it Really, I thought with the bad rolls he had earlier that uh, it was going to be a wash, but uh, it ended up... Uh, Coming down to be very close, we did have to end up going to points to determine the victor. So let's go ahead and get into that. 
So, after the points were tallied, the Beastmen won by less than 250 points. Um, it was a great game. This is is one of the best games I've had in recent memory, and uh, I mean, we both had a great time. Uh, it frustrates me that the loss of my flame cannon blowing itself up turned it from a tie to a victory for the Beastmen. Um... But all in all, uh, I, I kind of like the list. Uh, this is the first time I've played with three War Machines. I, I do think that's kind of a magic number for the Dwarves. Um, so I kind of like that. Um, all in all, I, I generally like the list. Having the control of the magic phase was nice. Uh, I really could have done with, with eating Wysons, but if I had, uh, he wouldn't have blown himself up. So I'm not sure how that <laughs> washes. Um, but all in all, it was a lot of fun. Um, th this, even though I still am not winning with my dwarves, I think I'm making progress with them. And I really like our narrative where the story's going with them, and I like the, the amount of work in the paint. I think they look good. Um, so factoring all this stuff in, I have decided I am going to keep my dwarves and keep working on them. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously not where I'd like to be with them yet for, as a general ship uh, point of view, but uh, I definitely think there's some room to grow and room to improve there, so I'm going to keep going with them. Um, I definitely think I like the bolt throwers. I actually am, am thinking, uh, just for points-wise, uh, of taking out the cannon painting up my other bolt thrower and doing a couple of bolt throwers uh, and the flame cannon, that might actually leave me enough points if I finagle it a little bit to include a third gyrocopter, which uh, I, I definitely think is, is necessary. Um, all in all, my opponent's list I thought was very strong. Uh, I, I really think the only thing that kept my left flank there as together as it was was the combination of the Dwarf brew house, which was making me unbreakable, and the fact that his Minotaurs just could not catch a break and get into combat. I think if he had gotten into combat with them a lot earlier, this game would have been much, much different. But uh, it was fun. It was a great game. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, if you have any comments, please leave them below and like, and subscribe to the video if you have not, or subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Um, again, I just want to send out another reminder. We are running a, a contest for the best designed, uh, character and backstory to enter into our narrative. Character has to be at least 25 or be able to fit into 2,500 points and, uh, in one of the armies that are currently in our narrative. The winning uh, character is going to be announced on the uh, episode of Narrations and Lamentations on the 10th, uh, and that character will be used in our narrative armies from that point forward. So uh, guy gives you guys an opportunity to influence the narrative and uh, come up with a, a fun little contest. We've already gotten a lot of responses for the Warriors of Chaos Army, so if there's anybody out there who loves anybody else other than the Warriors, um, come on, give us some love. We'd, we'd love to see some characters from, from any of the other armies um, and, and look forward to seeing all the work that, that, that people are doing. Folks are already being very, very impressive, so... Uh, Time's getting short, so go ahead and, and send your uh, uh, your entries to Josh L. Merritt, M-E-R-R-I-T-T, -T, at gmail.com. Um, other than that, thanks for watching, guys, and we will catch you next time.